This video is designed to walk you through your duties as election officials on the election day. It is divided into modules, with each module covering different election activities. Module 1. The Polling Team At a polling unit, PU, there shall be a minimum of four officials comprising Presiding Officer, PO, Ballot Paper Issuance and Overseer, Assistant Presiding Officer, AP01, Verification and Statistics, Assistant Presiding Officer, AP02, Register, Check and Inking, Assistant Presiding Officer, AP03, Q Controller. A polling unit with voting points VPs comprises four APOs in each voting point, with a presiding officer overseeing the polling unit. Their functions are as follows. Assistant presiding officer, APO, VP. Ballot paper issuance and overseer. Assistant presiding officer, APO1. Verification and statistics. Assistant Presiding Officer AP02, Register, Check and Inking. Assistant Presiding Officer AP03, Q Controller. AP01, AP02 and AP03 shall work under the supervision of AP0, VP. Model 2, Duties of Poll Officials. The presiding officer, PO, is in charge of all activities at the polling unit on the election day, including polling, sorting and counting of votes, as well as announcements of the election results at the PU. 1. Take delivery of and inspect all materials and equipment for election from the supervisory presiding officer, SPO, and ensure their security particularly the sensitive materials such as the ballot papers and result forms. 2. Must be at the polling unit at least one hour before official commencement of polling to set up the polling unit. 3. Coordinate activities in the voting points, VPs, under his or supervision. 4. Conducts voter education before polling. 5. Issues ballot papers to voters and ensures that voters drop some printed ballot papers into the appropriate ballot boxes. 6. Returns all election materials, other than the result sheets and the card reader to the SPO for delivery to the EO after polling. 7. Delivers the card reader and completed result sheets to the Registration Area Collation Officer, RACO. 8. Report any security incidents to the security agents at the polling unit and, where necessary, invites the police or security agents to maintain order, keep the peace or arrest any person committing an offense. 9. Document adverse incidents using incident report form and informs the appropriate authority. 10. Responds to calls from the Election Operations Support Center, EOSC for periodic updates on progress of the election and threats. The APO 1 1. Works under the supervision of the PO or APO VP. 2. Assists with collection of election materials from the SPO. 3. Assists with the return of election materials to the SPO. 4. Verifies and authenticates the voter using Smart Card Reader, SCR. 5. Fills the gender and disability status for each voter in the PWD Voter Information and Statistics Form, EC40H. The APO2. 1. Assists with the collection of election materials from the SPO. 2. Confirms that the voters' details in the PVC are contained in the register of voters and ticks the appropriate box by the voters' name before polling. 3. Applies indelible ink to the cortical of the appropriate finger of the voter before voting. 4. Completes forms EC40H.
PWD Voters Information and Statistics, PU or VP. 5. Assist in the preparation and sorting of the ballot. 6. Assist with the return of election materials to the SPO at the close of poll. The APO3. 1. Ensures orderly queuing of voters. 2. Arranges separate queues for male and female in areas where the mingling of both male and female in the same queue is not allowed. The APO VP. 1. Supervises the conduct of all activities during polling, sorting, and counting in the voting point VP. 2. Acts for the PO at the voting point. 3. Regulates the conduct of voters at the voting point VP. 4. Decides on all cases reported to him or her by the AP APO1, APO2, and APO3. Model 3. Election Day Activities. Receiving Election Materials. 1. Receiving Non-Sensitive Election Materials. Before commencement of the election, the presiding officer, PO, shall... Step 1. Receive non-sensitive items from the supervisory presiding officer, SPO. Step 2. Verify that all materials have been received. The assistant presiding officers, APOs, shall assist in doing this. See checklist of non-sensitive materials. Step 3. Record all items received on form EC25B, election materials checklist, in the polling unit booklet. Step 4. Sign as appropriate. 2. Receiving sensitive election materials. The PO shall, step 1, receive sensitive materials for the polling unit from the supervisory presiding officer, SPO. Step 2. Record on form EC40A, ballot paper account and verification statement, in the polling unit booklet the serial number range of the ballot papers and total quantity of ballot papers for each type of election received from the supervisory presiding officer, SPO. Step 3. Check the materials to ensure they are complete. 3. Checklist for presiding officer. Forms EC17, EC40H, EC60E, ETC. Polling Unit Booklet. Form EC8A series for each election. Polling zone posters, voting process posters, and poll results posters. Register of voters. Ballot papers. Ballot boxes and seals. Envelopes. Two biros. Indelible ink. Stamp. Two stamp pads. Voting cubicles. INEC bag. Glue. Paper tape. List of political parties contesting elections with names of their contestants or candidates. Smart card reader SCR. Twine for crowd control. Module 4. Setting up the polling unit. On election day, the PO with his or polling team shall, step 1, remove all campaign materials, if any, from the polling unit. Step 2. Hang up posters such as polling zone, polling unit, correct fingerprinting, and voting process posters, ETC. Step 3. Set up the layout of the PU or VP in accordance with approved layout. Step 4. Arrange the tables and chairs to facilitate easy access for voters in line with the commission's approved format. Step 5. Set up the voting cubicle in such a way that the voter can mark his or her ballot papers in secret. Step 6. Place one stamp pad in the voting cubicle for use by the voter to thumbprint the ballot papers. Step 7. Place the register of voters, indelible ink, and biro on the table for use by the assistant presiding officer, APO2. Step 8. Place INEX stamp, stamp pad, and biro on the table for use by the PO or APO VP. Step 9. Check the smart card readers for operational readiness. Step 10. Open the ballot box and display it in full view of all persons at the polling unit or voting point to show that the ballot box is empty. Step 11. 
lock the ballot box with the seal provided and place it in the open and most suitable position within the polling unit or voting point. Step 12. Place the ballot papers and tendered ballot papers on the table. Step 13. Allow the accredited polling agents, observers and journalists to observe proceedings at polling unit. Now let us look at the setup for polling in a standalone polling unit. This is the security personnel to provide security for the polling unit. And this is the APO3 in charge of queuing. Here is the entrance to the polling unit. This is the APO1 for verification and statistics. This is the APO2 for register check and inking. And this is the presiding officer. These are party agents of the political parties present. These are the accredited observers. These are the voting cubicles, and here are the ballot boxes. This is the exit from the polling unit. And here is another security personnel covering the exit. This is the setup of a standalone polling unit. Note, if an APO VP is posted to a voting point VP within a polling unit PU, he or she shall receive briefing as well as collect all materials for the VP from the SPO or the PO of the PU. Module 5. Polling Procedure This is continuous accreditation and voting. At 8 a.m., the presiding officer shall Step 1. Introduce the poll officials and polling agents present and explain the polling procedure. Step 2. Allow voters into the polling unit or voting point in an orderly manner or queue. Note, separate the male and female where the culture does not allow the mingling of male and female in one queue. Step 3. Declare the polling unit open for polling. The APO1 shall, Step 1, request for the PVC of the voter. Step 2, match the photograph PVC to the voter. Step 3, read the PVC using the smart card reader to verify that the PVC belongs to the voter and that the polling unit details in the PVC correspond with those of that polling unit. Step 4, request the voter to place the appropriate finger in the place provided on the smart card reader for authentication. Step 5. On verification by the smart card reader, proceed to APO2 to document the gender of the voter and indicate where applicable any physically challenged person using PWD Voter Information and Statistics Form, EC40H. The verified and authenticated voter shall then present himself or herself to the APO2, register, check and inking. The APO2 shall, Step 1, request for ease or permanent voter's card. Step 2. Check the register of voters to confirm that the voter's name, details, and voter identification number, VIN, are as contained on the register of voters. Step 3. Tick the left side of the name of the voter if the person's name is on the register of voters. Step 4. Apply indelible ink to the article of the specified fingernail on the left hand of the voter. In the case of general elections, Indelible ink would be applied to any of the applicable five fingers thus. 1. Left thumb, in the case of presidential and national assembly elections. 2. Left index finger, in the case of governorship and state assembly elections. 3. But in the case of stand-alone election, it would be applied to the left thumb of the voter. APO 2 shall click the failed to read PVC FR box on the left margin of the voter's details in the register of voters where the card reader fails to read the PVC. The accredited voter shall then present himself or herself to the presiding officer PO. The PO shall step one, check the article of the appropriate finger or thumbnail of the voter to confirm that he or she has been accredited. Step 2. On being satisfied that the person before him or her has been duly accredited, stamp, sign, and date the back of the ballot papers. Step 3. Issue the endorsed ballot papers to the voter. Step 4. Request the voter to proceed to the voting cubicle to thumbprint the ballot papers in secret.
in the space provided beside the logo of the party of the voter's choice. Step 5. Advise the voter to fold the ballot papers vertically inward after thumb printing. Step 6. Ensure that the voter deposits the thumb printed ballot papers into the appropriate ballot boxes placed in open view. Step 7. After casting his or her ballot, advise the voter to leave the polling unit. The presiding officer, P.O., shall click the failed accreditation FA box on the left margin of the voter's details in the register of voters where the card reader reads the PVC but the voter's fingerprints are not authenticated after second attempt using the card reader. Now let us look at the polling procedure as discussed. These are the voters on the queue. This is the security personnel covering the entrance of polling unit. The APO3 checked in the next voter on the queue to the polling unit. Here is the checked in voter in front of the APO1 for verification and authentication. After being verified and authenticated, the voter then proceeds to the APO2 for register check and inking. Immediately the voter is cleared and gets his or her finger inked by the APO2 the voter moves to the presiding officer to collect ballot papers. Here is the voter in a voting cubicle, some printing his or her ballot papers secretly. The voter proceeds to drop his or her thumb printed ballot papers in the right boxes. Here is the voter leaving the polling unit. Remember this is the security personnel covering the polling unit exit. After every voter on the queue has voted, the presiding officer shall Step 1. Declare voting closed. Step 2. Cancel all the unused ballot papers by drawing two lines across them on the front like this. Double forward slash. And writing the word cancelled in between the lines. Or where available, use a stamp to stamp cancelled on each of the unused ballot papers. Step 3. Obtain the number of voters verified from the smart card reader. Step 4. Send the number of voters verified from the smart card reader to the cloud. Step 5. Count the number of accredited voters in the register of voters. Step 6. Compare the number of voters verified by the smart card reader with the number of accredited voters checked in the register of voters. Step 7. Enter the figures into the appropriate forms, EC8A or EC8A VP series. Module 6. Preparing for ballot sorting. In preparing for sorting of the ballots, the presiding officer shall prepare party name tags for the various parties and for rejected ballots. Before opening the ballot box, the PO shall, Step 1, counts the unused ballot papers and records the quantity and serial numbers of the unused ballot papers on form EC40A in the polling unit booklet. Step 2. Put the unused ballot papers in envelope EC50A. Step 3. Count the counterfoils of the used ballot papers and record the quantity on form EC40A in the polling unit booklet. Step 4. Put the counterfoils of the used ballot papers in envelope EC50F. Step 5. Count any spoiled ballot papers. Record the quantity and their serial numbers on form EC50C in the polling unit booklet. Step 6. Put the spoiled ballot papers in envelope EC50A. Step 7. Openly announce the seal serial number to verify the seal. Step 8. Cut the seal to unlock the ballot box and empty the contents in full view of all persons present. Module 7. Sorting Procedure The presiding officer, P.O., shall Step 1. In the case of general elections, sort according to the type of election. Sort the ballots into separate piles for each political party and one pile for rejected ballots. Step 2. Loudly count the votes scored by each political party in the presence of the party agents and observers. 
Step three, write the word rejected in the front side of every rejected ballot. Step four, show all rejected ballots to the polling agents and observers present. Step five, where any objection against such rejection is raised by a candidate or party agent, write the words rejected but objected to on the front side of the ballot. Step six, count and record the quantity and their serial numbers on form EC40B. Statement of rejected and spot ballots in the polling unit booklet. Step seven, put all rejected ballots in envelope EC50A. Step eight, count and record the quantity of tendered ballots on form EC40F, tendered ballot statement. Step nine, put all tendered ballots in the envelope provided. Module eight, counting procedure. Immediately after sorting of ballots, the presiding officer PO shall step one, loudly count the votes scored by each party or candidate. Step two, write on the sheet of paper the number of valid votes scored by each party to allow for cross-checking before recording same on form EC8A1. Step three, in order to ascertain the number of used ballot papers, verify the result of the poll by adding the following the number of spoiled ballot papers, the number of rejected ballot, the number of valid votes scored by parties. Step four, verify the results according to the prescribed procedure. And step five, enter the scores of the candidates in both words and figures in the appropriate forms EC8A or EC8A VP series. Module nine, Recording of votes. Recording of votes on form EC8A series. The presiding officer PO shall, step one, record the number of registered voters as contained in the register of voters. Step two, refer to form EC40A to record the total number of ballot papers issued to the polling unit and the number of unused ballot papers. Step three, refer to form EC40B to record the number of rejected ballots and form EC40C to record the number of spoiled ballot papers. Step four, record the valid votes scored by each of the political parties in figures and in words in the spaces provided. Step five, add up and record the total valid votes scored by all the parties at the bottom of the form, as well as in the box for item seven at the top of the form. Step six, add up the number of spot ballot papers plus the number of rejected ballots plus the total valid votes to get the number of used ballot papers and record same in the box provided. Step seven, write his or her name on the relevant EC8A form with stamp and date. He or she shall then sign the form and request the polling agent present to countersign it. Step eight, loudly announce the result of the poll at the polling unit for the information of those present. Step nine, give a duplicate copy of the completed form EC8A1 to each of the polling agents and police or any security present at the polling unit. Step 10, complete the result poster form EC60E and paste it at a conspicuous place in the polling unit. Tap the Electronic collation and transmission of results using the smart card reader for e-transmission. The presiding officer PO shall Step 1. Tap the e-collation icon on the home screen of the smart card reader to launch the e-collation application. Step 2. Enter his unique username and password and tap the login button. Step three, tap plus button on e-collation dashboard to navigate to PU results data entry page. Step four, enter the figures from the form EC8A into three boxes, registered voters, invalid votes or rejected votes, and accredited voters into the PU results data entry page. Note, 
No figures should be entered into total votes and valid vote text boxes. They will be automatically generated after publishing the result. Step 5. Tap on political party's acronym on the result data entry page and enter the party's score as contained in Form EC8A series. Step 6. Tap the Update Result button. Step 7. Repeat Step 5 and Step 6 for all the contesting parties. Note. Before publishing the result, PO should check and recheck that the figures entered correspond with the figures in Form EC8A series in order to avoid wrong figure input. After publishing, PO cannot make any changes to the result. Step 8. Click on Publish Result button. This will lead you to Result Submission window. Note, if the total valid votes is more than the accredited voters, the system will not allow you to publish the result. Step 9. I wish to publish this result button is auto-selected. Step 10. Enter appropriate password in the space provided. Step 11. Click on Submit Result. In the event that there are reasons to nullify election, PO shall. Step 1. Select I wish to nullify this result button. Step 2. Enter the nullification reason. Step 3. Click Submit Result. If there is need to change entries or inputs, click Cancel button to change entries. Note, then after submission, wait for notification to confirm the acceptance of the results. Thus, success. Result has been published. To confirm results submitted, Step 1. Log in using the same username and password. Step 2. On the e-collision dashboard, plus sign will be replaced with tick marking sign. Step 3. Click on the tick marking sign. Step 4. The already sent results will be displayed showing valid votes, total votes, and all other information. Note, PO should make sure that the success message, success, result has been published, appears before logging out. Module 10, Packing Up. Following the completion of recording of the votes on forms EC8A and or EC8A1 and EC8A VP, the presiding officer PO shall, step 1, put the original of form EC8A and or EC8A1 and EC8A VP, statement of result of poll from the polling unit, in the tamper-proof envelopes. Step 2. Put the following items in the respective envelopes provided. 1. Register of voters and tendered vote list. Place in envelopes EC50B. 2. Used ballot papers. Place in envelopes EC50V. 3. Form EC40A. Ballot paper account and verification statement. Place in envelopes.